Hey friends, welcome back. So probiotics are really all the rage right now. A lot of people are taking them. When you go on Amazon, you type in some of the top 100 products in, in the health and, and beauty space, probiotics comes up in the top 10. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about whether or not you even need probiotics, how to think through how probiotics work, and then my four tips for kind of figuring out whether or not the probiotic that you've been taking or you're considering taking is even worth buying. So let's just take a big 50,000 foot view. Why even consider taking a probiotic? Well, they're kind of marketed as cure-all gut aids. You know, if you have an upset tummy, if you have uh, constipation, diarrhea, you just need some probiotics. Now, you know, I own a supplement company. I would love to market probiotics like that, but I think that's kind of unethical because we now know that the science of probiotics is really strain specific. Imagine, for example, let's just make an analogy so that we can understand a topic. I like to look at the opposite. If we think about antibiotics, you would never go to a doctor and just say, hey, give me some random antibiotic for this you know, tummy ache that I'm having. Your doctor would hopefully ask you these things. Well, look, first of all, let's check your temperature. Let's look at your blood work, neutrophil count, lymphocyte, your white blood cells to see if you even need an antibiotic. And so really, if we think of antibiotics, which are killing microbes, they're very specific, right? Specific for which microbes, whether it's you know different bacteria or antiviral, very specific. So if we kind of parlay that same paradigm and translate that over to uh, probiotics, we understand kind of the same things. Probiotics are very strain specific in how they affect your body. So if you have an upset tummy and you have diarrhea, for example, you might do better on Saccharomyces boulardii, which is a probiotic yeast that has been shown to be effective in that context, in traveler's diarrhea, upset tummy. Now, if you have a weak or you know, a suboptimal functioning immune system, there are certain strains that have been shown to improve natural killer cell activity and phagocytic capacity. So those probiotics might be more specific for that specific condition. For example, there's other probiotics strains, Bifidobacterium animalis subspecies lactis, a so-called B420 strain that actually has good data for how it affects blood sugar, how it affects waist circumference and body composition. So where I'm going with this is we need to reframe how we view probiotics as these shotgun cure-all gut aids to more specific and strain specific, just like how many healthcare practitioners prescribe antibiotics. It's very specific for the bug. If you have a C. diff infection, you need this antibiotic. Uh, Keflex, for example, maybe. Um, if you have Staph aureus, you might need another drug, okay? So that's how to think through these. So hopefully the probiotic that you've been taking or that you consider taking has the strain specificity. So we have the genus, we have the species and the strain. I just mentioned Bifidobacterium sub subspecies lactis animalis. I know it's a big tongue twister, but we have the genus, species, and then the strain is B420. So just like if we think about Homo sapiens, we're all a little bit different based upon you know, our race and our ethnicity. We're all Homo sapiens, right? We Genus and species is the same, but we're slightly different as individuals. We have different eye color, hair color. We're all of different sizes and shapes, slightly different skin tones, all of that. So we need to think of probiotics as and look at their strength. So here's the here comes kind of the buyer's guide. Okay, so if you're buying a probiotic and it doesn't list the strain, that's a major red flag. Okay, that means that either the company is they don't know the strain, they're buying a very cheap generic probiotic, so they don't really they know that you don't know, so they're like, why would they pay more money to list the strain? Uh, because the, the strain list, kind of generic, say lactobacillus, acidophilus, off the shelf, bulk raw material, is super cheap. Uh, compared to, say, lactobacillus, acidophilus, LA14, or lactobacillus, acidophilus, DDS1, okay? Anytime you get a strain specific probiotic from a raw material supplier, there's usually safety data. There's absorption data. We know that it, whether or not it's resistant to stomach acid, to other caustic agents in the gut like bile, like pancreatic lipase, all the enzymes, all these things are gonna break down. They're antimicrobial in nature to help protect us. Now, certain probiotics are more resistant to those strains. So the product that you're choosing should be mindful of this factor, okay? And so they should list the strain. They should also be listing the strain quantity, how many milligrams of that strain, because it's very common for probiotic companies or actually supplement companies to do this. They'll work with a probiotic vendor. The vendor will say, hey, look, um, just put this and wrap all of these strains, maybe five or six strains in what's called a proprietary blend. So the end user has no idea 
what, how much quantities of what they're getting. And this is literally what the raw material vendors will tell the supplement company and what the supplement company will often do is they'll say, hey, look, this one strain is really cheap and it's really stable. We know that these other strains are more expensive, so let's just kind of sprinkle those in, maybe a few milligrams, and we'll load it up on the really stable, affordable strain. And some companies go, yeah, we want to do that because we're not owned you know, by, you know, we're not a family business. We have venture capitalists who want to return on their investment, so we want to make this a high margin probiotic. This is literally, it happens all the time in the space. I've had many doctor friends who we've helped co-create products over the years, and this is what raw material vendors tell them to do. And some of them didn't know about this and they did it. And then once they saw the breakdown of their product, they're like, holy cow, you gave me unethical information. It's crazy, this happens all the time. So again, strain specific, and then you need to know how much of the quantity of the strain is in there. 10 milligrams, 50 milligrams, whatever, so that you don't get duped with that, okay? So now let's talk about the absence of prebiotics in your probiotic. Now you might be saying, well, Mike, if I'm taking a probiotic, don't I want the fuel, the prebiotic fiber to help enhance the growth of the bugs? The, the thing is you actually don't, you know why? There's a lot of moisture activity in prebiotics. So when you take your probiotics, and you mix in prebiotics, they can start reacting and degrading over time. So what you think you're getting may not actually be there by the time you ingest it. So as sexy and you know, alluring as it may sound to have a combo product where you're having prebiotics with your probiotics, you don't want to have them together, okay? It's kind of like a C student in life. It's not really good at any one thing. You might be getting some prebiotics, but you're not getting as much of the probiotics that you really want. Okay, so I know that sounds confusing, to you, but uh, you need to keep in mind the water activity of the prebiotic will help to degrade the potency of the probiotic. So that's tip number two. Now that this is a common tip because a lot of companies like to advertise that they have they have both of these things together, and unfortunately, that's not the best for you. Okay. Uh, the third thing is you want to look at the delivery system. What does that mean? That means. Is it delivered in a, um, you know, like a, a blister pack? Is it in a powder? Is it just in a bottle? Okay, so those are usually the three, three ways. So let's talk about why you may not want a probiotic powder, okay? Here's why. Now it sounds like it's really kind of, you know, less, less stuff, it might be better, you just have the scoop of this powder. Okay, so the minute that you open up that powder and expose that probiotic powder to moisture, to oxygen, it's going to start degrading. Okay, you, you've, it's kind of like when you open up a coffee bag. Once you open up coffee, right, it's, you get, it starts reacting, it's gonna degrade over time, uh, it's gonna lose its flavor, its nuttiness, uh, it's gonna start to oxidize. So, so you don't want that. What you want is what I recommend, and this is actually what we sell in our business, and I would hope that you would look for this in, in other companies as well, uh, is, is you want the nitrogen purge blister pack technology. What's unique about this is each individual capsule is delivered in a nitrogen sealed cart. So when you dispense one capsule, you're not exposing all the other ones to, again, those caustic agents in the environment, the moisture uh, and the oxygen, which will enhance the degradation. And what that means is, as a consumer, you're, you're basically accelerating the, the loss of potency, meaning that you're not gonna get the expected benefits from that product. And so that's kind of the difference. Now, when you have the powder and when you have something just in a bottle with a bunch of capsules, the minute you open that up and break that heat induction seal, moisture and oxygen is gonna help degrade that, uh, accelerate that, which is not good for you because you're kind of wasting money. So that's what we do in our business. I'll put links below if you're so interested in learning more about that unique delivery system that also enables the products to not have to require refrigeration which I think is nice because you're, you know, from the environment, the logistics, you can travel with it, it's very stable, okay? Now, uh, the fourth thing that I recommend that you consider is looking for companies that supply probiotics in a DR cap, it's called an acid resistant vegetable capsule. Okay, why consider that? Well, it's gonna be resistant to the uh, really low pH, the really acidic environment in the stomach. So it will make its way to the small intestine where it can start to colonize and start to interact with the immune system because really, as I kind of talked about earlier, it's kind of cool to talk about how probiotics affect diversity, how they affect the ecosystem in the gut. But if you talk to scientists who've studied this, and we've had many on our podcast and on this platform before, the main way that probiotics are working is they're interacting with our gut immune system, the so-called GALT tissue, the gastrointestinal lymphoid tissue. They're interacting there and sharing 
uh, whether it's DNA, RNA, signaling molecules, quorum sensing, there's a lot of purported mechanisms through which bacteria work. They're interacting with your gut immune system and that's how they're affecting your physiology largely. There probably is some benefits to improving the ecosystem, changing you know, colonization, acromenzia, mycinophilia, different bugs and things like that. But I think that's the, the biggest, biggest benefit. So again, to summarize, I know we talked a lot about thing, a lot of complex issues in this video. I, I really hope that I didn't lose anyone with the complexity. Just to recap everything so that you have a better idea of like how to think through this. Okay, number one, we need to rethink how we view probiotics. They're very strain specific, just like antibiotics are. Number two, when you're buying probiotics, you want to make sure that the probiotic that you're buying includes strain specificity. If it just says lactobacillus acidophilus, if it just says bifidobacterium longum, I want you to pass on that product because the company that's selling that to you is not being totally transparent about what they're putting in the product, okay? Especially if there's a, pr a, a proprietary blend where all these probiotics are in there but you have no idea how much of what quantity, that's another major red flag. Okay, you wanna look for the delivery system. If you're getting bulk powder or something in capsules, you need to be very mindful of where you store that because if you put it in your refrigerator, if you put it outside, if you live in a human environment, if you have air conditioning, all that, you're gonna accelerate the degradation. And so this is why the nitrogen purge blister pack technology is very helpful. And kind of the final tip you wanna remember is the DR cap, the acid resistant vegetable cap. That's a way to enhance the ability of that probiotic to give you the best health benefits. So. Thanks for tuning all the way in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Your comments mean a lot to me. So if you have any questions, if you've been taking a probiotic, I would love to know like what your feedback is, etc. Put links below. And if you're considering taking probiotics, you might want to consider our website, MyoScience with an X. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. We have strain-specific probiotics. We tell you the exact quantities. We're very transparent about what we're doing, and we deliver them in a nitrogen purge blister pack, which makes them easy to travel with, great for the family, throw in your suitcase, you're off to the races. You don't have to worry about whether or not they're in the fridge with the temperature and all that. So consider that over on our website, myoscience.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on a future video down the road.